Hey everyone, Hong here. Welcome back to the channel. I am back home here in Hong Kong, but I'm not gonna be staying here for long because I'm gonna get onto that plane and fly all the way up to Sichuan, China to visit Chengdu. So if you're interested to join me on this short little holiday, stick around. Chengdu is the capital of the Chinese province Sichuan and with about 21 million inhabitants, it's the fourth most populous city in China. The flight distance from Hong Kong to Chengdu is slightly over 1300 kilometers with a flight time of just under three hours. Being an economic and manufacturing powerhouse, the city is a sprawling metropolis expanding on a yearly basis. But don't let all the high-tech bullet trains and skyscrapers fool you. Chengdu is also one of the oldest ancient cities in the world, with a rich cultural heritage spanning over 4,000 years. Now, I've been to many corners of China for school, work, travel, and vacations, but I've never been to Chengdu. This family trip was highly anticipated. Hello, 大家好,欢迎来到中国四川成都 I'm here for a week with the family and I thought I'll take you guys with me to visit some must-see sites here in Chengdu, China Let's go! The first place we visited were the shopping districts of Chunxi Lu and Tai Gu Li, a clear representation of the leaps in modernization and commercialization of this beautiful city. During much of the mid to late 20th century, in a quest to modernize, many old and traditional buildings and walls were demolished to make way for newer constructions. That is a sad fact that has affected parts of China, but thankfully, not all was lost. Understanding the historical importance of preserving the old, the government quickly stepped up its conservation efforts to safeguard many old buildings all around the country, and Chengdu was no exception. Today, many of these historical buildings have been rebuilt, refurbished, and in the case of these shopping districts, repurposed. You may even find inner peace and tranquility in the heart of this shopping district with a visit to the Temple of Infinite Compassion and Mercy. Built sometime in the 3rd century, this beautifully restored 1800-year-old temple, known locally as Gu Da Sheng Ci Si, offers a glimpse into the Buddhist belief. From luxury shopping malls to street vendors, from well-known international brands to local startups, even an entire section filled with EV showrooms, the shopping districts of Chunxi Lu and Tai Gu Li offer locals and visitors alike a true taste of what modern China is like. By now, you might have noticed the many panda icons, cartoons, and posters all around the city. And no visit to Chengdu can ever be complete without a visit to the Chengdu Panda Base, which was the next tourist attraction on our list. Probably one of the most iconic animals in the world, the giant panda is also China's most cherished ambassador and a national symbol for peace, love, and ecological conservation. Once on the brink of extinction, it took the nation decades of meticulous management to bring its population, both in captivity and in the wild, back up to safer numbers. And spearheading all that is the Chengdu research base of giant panda breeding. I will be the first to admit that visiting this large conservation park during the peak period 
basically during the summer school holidays, was challenging to say the least because there were so many people. According to our local guide, the park welcomes up to 100,000 visitors a day and the best time to visit is actually during spring or autumn, with winter being the quietest period with about 8,000 visitors daily. Furthermore, the weather was blistering hot while we were there and all the pandas were moved into their indoor facilities. That said, despite the long queues and waiting time, getting to see the giant pandas alongside the lesser known red pandas was a definite must. We were even lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a baby panda that was barely one month old. While I was worried about the noise all the visitors were making, our guide assured us that the glass was soundproof and that the park and park officials prioritizes the health and safety of the pandas more than the human visitors. Hey everyone, we are here at the Qingsha Guan, and this is one of the oldest archaeological sites in all of China. It's about 3,000 years old. Why don't we go in and check it out? While we initially planned to visit the older San Xingdui archaeological site and museum, it was temporarily closed for renovations, which is why we came to Jingsa, the second oldest archaeological site in the province of Sichuan. This particular site was only discovered in 2001 and is believed to have been the capital of the ancient Shu civilization, which went into decline sometime between 500 to 200 BCE. The reason for this ancient civilization to disappear is widely hypothesized to be due to earthquakes and or flooding. Thousands of artifacts dating back to over 3,000 years ago were discovered and recovered here, including many famous items such as the golden sunbird disc and the smiling gold mask, both of which we shall see in a little while. Also discovered here were fossils of massive elephant tusks, large turtle shells, horns from various animals, fossilized wood, alongside thousands of gold, bronze and jade jewelry. Moving on from the archaeological site, which is still actively and painstakingly being excavated by archaeologists, we head to the museum, where all the treasures are showcased. With over 50 buildings, 300 burial sites, up to 10,000 pieces of pottery, as well as thousands of tools and weapons excavated, the remnants of this once powerful and almost forgotten civilization sheds light on how the ancient people lived, their lifestyle and diet, and what their beliefs were. The museum was designed really well, educational, informative, and most importantly, awe-inspiring. If you plan on visiting, do consider hiring a guide at the ticketing office and try to avoid the peak season to fully immerse yourself in the rich heritage of Jingsa.
Another tourist attraction to visit when in Chengdu will be Du Jiang Yan, an ancient irrigation system constructed around 256 BCE, more than 2,000 years ago. This was during the Zhou Dynasty, decades before Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor to unite all of China, came to power. Over the millennia, this engineering marvel has been damaged due to earthquakes, but also rebuilt and improved, serving as a vital irrigation and flood control system still in use today. Water management is indispensable to the security, productivity, and survival of any society, something that ancient civilizations understood well. Du Jiangyan redistributes the water flow from the Minjiang River, the longest tributary of the mighty Tangjiang River. Man-made levees were constructed from long baskets of woven bamboo filled with stones and held in place by wooden tripods. What was even more impressive was that this was all constructed before gunpowder was invented, which, by the way, was one of the four great inventions from ancient China, the other three being the compass, paper making, and printing. Now because the only tools available at the time were incapable of penetrating the hard rock of the mountains to open a new water channel, a combination of fire and water was used to heat and cool the rocks until they cracked and could be moved. This was an arduous challenge that took ingenuity, innovation and above all else, blood, sweat and tears. Today, Du Jiangyan is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but more importantly, a legacy marvel left behind by the hard work and sacrifices of ancient China. The final stop to visit will be the Quan Zai Xiangzi, or Wide and Narrow Alley. These are remnants from the Qing Dynasty, the last imperial dynasty of China, and consist of three main alleys. As the name suggests, there is a wide alley, a narrow alley, and a crisscrossing alley surrounded by centuries-old buildings and courtyards, all of which have been restored to their former glory. This is also the ideal place to pick up souvenirs and gifts, sample delicious local snacks, experience traditional Chinese tea ceremonies, and to bring home exquisite craftwork and art. Aside from the many street vendors, there are also cultural museums, historical landmarks, as well as a wide variety of restaurants and bars located along these alleyways. Something all tourists to Chengdu should experience will of course be the Ma La, a spicy and numbing seasoning or sauce made from Sichuan peppercorn and chili. Ma La is widely used in all forms of cooking here, ranging from hot pot to stir-fried dishes, beef jerky, and even candy. For someone who can't take spice, I was grateful that there were milder options available, but for the full experience, I definitely recommend trying the authentic options. Something we noticed throughout our entire trip was that many of the streets we visited were kept really clean. Naturally, like any large city, there will be corners and segments that are less developed, but on the most part, I was truly impressed. As the sun set and cooler temperatures rolled in, many of the local senior citizens gathered at the main square for some healthy activities, a hybrid form of line dancing mixed with traditional stands and modern steps.
Well, that ends my five, well, pretty much six days here in Chengdu, China. It was a fantastic trip and the family and I had a great time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. If you haven't already followed me on YouTube or on my social media accounts, please consider to do so. And I'll see you guys at the next adventure. Peace out.